Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI. This side, Asif Imdad. Today's video, we are going to talk about logistic regression. We have seen logistic regression with the demo in the previous videos, but uh, that was a very basic one. Now we'll go one step further and uh, we'll talk about how can we get the better results, how can we optimize logistic regression to get more out of it. Okay, so we'll be looking at the second demo, a practical demo. We'll be using a Jupyter notebook for this. The data set that we are going to use is a heart diseases data set. Basically, it's a coronary heart disease data set. So what are we going to predict here is given on the past data, past history of the person. Uh, what are the chances that this person may have a heart disease or no? interesting data set isn't it so let's see what we have in the demo let's get started okay so before we start we need to understand what does the data set looks like i told you about the logistic regression before it's a classification technique to predict a person may have a heart disease or may not have a heart disease right so we want to predict yes or no if person have or person doesn't have if you look at the columns, this is SBP is a blood pressure, person consumes a tobacco or no, the low density cholesterol, person has heart disease in his family history, one is for yes, zero is for no, then the obesity, then the alcohol, does alcohol consumption have any effect on the heart disease, then does the age has any effect on getting the heart diseases, then the final column, that this, this is our Y column, CHD, it's a coronary heart disease, at the baseline i mean we need to predict yes or no so given this data can a person have a heart disease okay i hope the problem statement is clear we have a lot of important columns here it's okay if you don't understand one or two column we don't need to worry about it but just to give you a gist just to give you a context of the data set i have quickly introduced you to the columns that we will be using in this example okay let's jump to the demo part if you have not watched previous video where we have discussed logistic regression, the first demo uh, with the iris data set, the same algorithm we have used, logistic regression for iris data set. Please go and watch that video first. All right, this is our notebook and uh, I'm jumping down as usual. It's again a thumb of a rule, you can say. Always uh, you need to import all the basic data science libraries like NumPy, Pandas, matplotlib seaborn right these are the four libraries i will always import at the start okay these are the variables shift enter to execute again uh, the database that we are using same information uh, we discussed about it already okay we are reading the csv file using pd is what pandas read csv and just provided the path so where is the path from current directory it is under data sets under the classification one i have my notebook from this directory under the data set i have my csv file relative path it is basically right show me first five data that is df.head we got five rows please observe this data closely bp is given tobacco consumption some numbers are given i see one interesting thing here a family history is in categorical form it's not numeric but machine learning algorithms need a data in the numbers it cannot process categorical data right other than this column everything i see is in the numbers so this is what i was talking about we are going one step ahead and looking at how can we process the data how can we get the better accuracy how can we tune the parameter how can we do the feature engineering there are a lot of things it is not only about training the model and predicting the output so if you see here our first task is to look at the data and uh, convert if we have any data in the categorical form convert it into the numbers let's do that to do that you see uh, we have a dictionary absent i'm considering zero present i'm considering one okay and uh, the data frame family history this is the column we are considering we are mapping this using the map function so how we are modifying this column is by using data frame family history this is the column map it to the history this i mean this dictionary right so convert it to zeros and ones from categorical data execute this again df.head you may see now family history is into the numbers not into the characters based on the data analysis we did we have identified the best column which gives us the better accuracy we did a feature engineering this is an amazing technique which helps us to 
understand the correlation with Y column and get the best out of our data. Get the best accuracy. Choose the columns which has the better correlation, more correlation on the Y on the accuracy and remove the noise, remove the garbage out of data. We have already discussed how to do the feature engineering in the last video. Please watch that video first. I'll keep the link in the description and in the I button. Let's proceed ahead. So based on the column selection we did, we can prepare our X and Y, right? Data frame, whatever columns you may want to consider. Y column is definitely CHD, that is coronary heart disease. Let me execute this. We prepared X and Y. We know how to do this, right? Discuss this in the previous videos already. Then uh, what is additional here? Look at this. This is really important, guys. Really important. We should have a two data sets, isn't it? One is to train and one is to test. Training data set is to train our model and testing data set is to see how good our model is performing. We will not expose all our data to the model. We'll divide our data into the two parts just to check how our model can perform in the data which is not already exposed to the model. So that's why we uh, are dividing our data into training and testing. To understand the train test data, I have drawn uh, some diagram here on the paint. Okay, this is our model, right? This is our data. Data we are dividing into two parts. Green is training data. It is a 70% training data and uh, testing data is 30%. It's up to us. You can divide your data into whatever ratio you want. 40, 60, 50, 50, whatever. Uh, now, what is the idea here? First, when we have a model, right? Whatever model, whatever algorithm that we are going to use, machine learning algorithm we are going to use, will provide only 70% data to the model and will train our model on this data and we'll see what is the score we get, what is the output we get on the training data. Okay. And this data we are not going to expose to the model, right? And once our model is trained in future, we are assuming that this testing data is a real time data. It's a new data so that we understand what is the actual output we are going to get what is the actual prediction we may get out of this model okay having high accuracy on training data doesn't make sense we must have a high accuracy on the testing data as well because this is the real data that is what the idea here that's why we are splitting our data into the two parts let's jump to our demo to divide our data we are taking the help of the library again sklearn model selection train test split this is the library we are using train test split simple okay and the variables we prepared here x train x test y train y test simple x train and y train this is the training x and training y x test y test is testing x and testing y very easy to understand right and this is the library we have used x and y columns and you can specify how do you want to split your data i have specified the test size need to be 0 0.3 that means out of one consider test data is 0 0.3 okay random state zero any random columns that's what it says let me execute this my data got split into 70 30 randomly Okay, so we are done with the feature engineering. Now we know the insights of the data. We have selected the columns. We have divided our data into 70, 30. Now we are good to train our model. Now this is very simple. We did it in the previous example as well, right? It's straightforward, right? We are using logistic regression. Let me execute this line. Then model is equal to logistic regression. The only additional thing that you may see here are the parameters, which are important. Okay, so these parameters will help you to fine tune your model. To learn more about these parameters, what are they, why are they, what is the value we can provide, you should look at the library, okay, SKLN library. Here you may observe some of the parameters, right? Just to give you an idea, there is something called penalty. We call it as L1, L2, elastic net. Then we have something called C. So these are the two parameters I generally use. Other than that, if you want to use more, just go through this documentation. It's just the official documentation. So three parameters we are using here, C, penalty and solver. Solver, don't worry about it much. By default, use always library linear. And uh, other than this, we have C and penalty. C is inverse of regularization. C is inverse of regularization. I know you will not understand this. We'll talk about regularization in some other videos. But just to give you an idea, regularization meaning getting more from the data, reducing the errors. So in short, to fine tune our model, we use these parameters. And the value of C can be 100, 10, 1, these are the values you can put in the parameters and penalty values can be L1, L2 and elastic net. 
Okay, so you may say what are these and which values I should put. It's kind of preparing a perfect recipe. It's kind of preparing a perfect food. It's a combination of spices that you put. It just comes from the experience. You just have to try out these different values and different penalty values L1, L2 and some values here. Based on this, you can check which values are giving better accuracy. But if you want to understand this more, go to scikit-learn documentation. All right, so for now, I am using 0.1, some value, L1 penalty, and we are training our model. Okay, model.fit, X train, Y train. If you check, we are providing only train value, X, Y, train, train. Good. And let's check the score, model.score, X train, Y train. I'm again providing training data to the model. Check the score, right? So on training data, the score is 73, meaning, on the same data, the model prediction is 73%. Now let's see how does my model will behave if I provide a new data which is not exposed, that is X test and Y test. This data is not given here in the model.fit if you check. Okay, it is X train and Y train, not Y X test and Y test. Let's see the testing score. You can see it here. On training, this is the accuracy we are getting and on testing, 72. Training accuracy will always be more because this is the data that your model already knows. The testing accuracy will be, most of the time, it will be lesser than the training accuracy because this is the new data, right? It's a new values on which your model is doing the prediction. We can just try changing these values and see what happens here. If I put 0 0.01 and try running this, okay, so now you see uh, the score has been reduced. As I told you, C is inverse of regularization, meaning smaller the value, more the regularization. Smaller the value, more the regularization. So we don't want more regularization here. Let one is, is a default value. Let me put 10. Okay, so we are getting 73 for 10. Less regularization. What do I get? 73. It's the same, right? No, I don't see any much difference here. If I put L2 penalty, what do I get? nothing much right so same values i'm getting here it's okay i just tried out different values so this is the maximum accuracy that i'm able to get here training and testing accuracy is 73 percent here i know that we haven't discussed regularization we'll talk about that in the different video let me know if you want a video on regularization as well put that in the comment we'll create a video for regularization as well i hope you understood not only simply use logistic regression but how to get the most out of these algorithms how do we do the feature engineering using correlation coefficient matrix and uh, how we have drawn this heat map right this is really amazing how did we split our data into training and testing and uh, how we are getting a best out of our model i hope you appreciate my efforts and uh, you are liking the content liking the way i explain the concepts if so please like share and comment on the videos thank you see you again in the next video bye bye